Welcome and indeed Happy New Year ladles and jelly spoons. This is Kai Matthews YouTube channel where we like diving into the nostalgic world of retro video games. Whether you're a seasoned fan of video games, he means old, or maybe you're new to the retro gaming scene. Let me tell you there's something magical about revisiting these classics that shaped the video gaming landscape. So grab yourself a brew. Aura. Pint of best. Hit that subscribe button and let's embark on a journey back in time with this month's Retro Roundup. Now our first stop is January 1994, featuring iconic consoles like the NES, the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis you know if you're from them parts, the Sega CD and of course the Super Nintendo. Oh god, who could forget the pixelated adventures of Mario, Sonic's high speed runs or the epic battles in Street Fighter 2. Those games laid the foundation for the industry that we know and love today. This month saw Nintendo dubbed 1994 the year of the cartridge after selling 1 billion game cartridges. Little would they know what was around the corner later in the year. Some video game fans already saw the writing on that particular wall and those people ahead of the game were more than likely playing <laughs> Midnight Raiders, released for the Sega CD, a game from an era where full motion video, that would be FMV, games were gaining popularity. It reflects the unique characteristics and limitations of that genre. Midnight Raiders was primarily an FMV game, which means it uses pre-recorded video clips for both storytelling and gameplay. This was a popular style in the early 1990s, as it allowed for more cinematic experiences compared to traditional graphics of the time. The game is set in a war-torn environment and follows the story of a special operations team. The player takes on the role of a member of this team, undertaking in various military missions. The narrative is driven by video sequences with players engaging in combat scenarios and strategic decision making. Midnight Riders typically involves shooting sequences and decision points. The shooting segments are on rails where players aim and shoot at targets on screen. The game's interface and mechanics are characteristics of early FMV games which often had limited interactivity compared to modern standards. Midnight Raiders is a prime example of the FMV game genre that was prominent in the early 90s, particularly on platforms like the Sega CD. It combines video based storytelling with interactive gameplay elements reflecting the experimental nature of video games during that era. This mission will leave no trace. We understand each other? Yeah. Ah, oh, so it's not going to turn up in our Tony's book and Mr. B is safe for the time being. Dune, the battle for Arrakis. Dune, the battle for Arrakis, also simply known as Dune 2. It is a real-time strategy that would be RTS game developed by Westwood Studios and released for the Sega Mega Drive in 1994. It's important to note that Dune The Battle for Arrakis for the Sega Mega Drive is an adaptation of the original Dune 2 The Building of a Dynasty released for PC in 1992. Ah, now Dune 2 Battle for Arrakis is considered one of the pioneering titles in the real-time strategy genre, I'll have you know. The player takes on the role of one of three noble houses. House Atreides, House Harkonnen, or House Ordos, vying for control of the desert planet Arrakis be June, then. and its valuable spice melange. The gameplay involves resource management, base building and strategic warfare against rival houses. Our game is set in Dune Universe, based on the science fiction novel Dune by Frank Herbert. The planet Arrakis is the only known source of the Spice Melange, a valuable substance that grants psychic abilities and is essential for space travel. Acknowledge. Reporting. Acknowledge. Reporting. June 2, the battle for Arrakis holds a special place in the history of real-time strategy games and its influence can still be seen in the genre today. Whilst June 2 from 1992 appears in the book 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by general editor Tony Mott of Edge Magazine fame, the Sega Mega Drive version, or Genesis if that's your jam, does not. 
So, you know, you've uh, dodged a bullet there, Mr. B. January 1999 now, a year that saw the release of the Pocket Station, a memory card peripheral by Sony for the PlayStation 1, categorised by Sony as a combination of a memory card and a miniature personal digital assistant. Tell it to get me a pint of best and find out what it thinks of these titles from January 1999. No! No! <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Released for the Nintendo 64 and marking the beginning of the iconic Super Smash Bros. series. Developed by HAL Laboratories and published by Nintendo, the game brought together characters from various Nintendo franchises, creating a unique and chaotic fighting game experience. Super Smash Bros. introduced a novel concept to farting game genre. Instead of traditional health bars, the goal is to knock opponents off the stage. The more damage a character takes, the further they get launched by attack. Now this is the first time that a collection of Nintendo based characters had been brought together in one game, Mario, Samus, Link etc. Mario Kart was the first time a collection of Mario based characters was used in one game. The game features a roster of 12 playable characters, each representing popular Nintendo franchises. Original characters like Mario, Link, Pikachu and Donkey Kong were joined by less conventional choices such as Captain Falcon and Jigglypuff. Now, the Japanese version had different sound effects. For example, when attacking an opponent with punches and kicks, they sounded like thwarts. Uh, as another example, when attacking with a beam sword, it sounded a lot like a lightsaber from Star Wars movies. The original Super Smash Bros. laid the groundwork for a franchise that has continued to grow and evolve. Subsequent entries in the series expanded the character roster, introduced new gameplay mechanics and embraced online multiplayer. Nintendo's marketing for the game included Super Smash Bros. Slamfest 99, a live fight between characters Bill as a no holes barred anything goes toe to toe slam fest staged at the MGM Grand in early 1999 and it was streamed via real player yeah remember that a photo of the actors alongside their costumes surfaced in early 2020 and it spread wildly along with a few grainy images and an event description. However, no live footage of the event is known to have survived. For many players, Super Smash Bros. on the N64 holds a special place in their heart, representing the joy of playing with friends and family in the early days of 3D console gaming. Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64 remains a classic that not only revolutionised the fighting game genre but also brought together generations of video game fans in the spirit of friendly competition and nostalgia. <laughs> What's that I hear you cry? Amazingly, no, it's not in book. So you see it for now, Mr. B, but ask yourself this for how long? Cheryl? Is that Cheryl? Silent Hill. Released for the Sony PlayStation, Silent Hill is a survival horror game developed by Konami. It is the first instalment in the critically acclaimed Silent Hill series, which has become renowned for its atmospheric horror and psychological elements. You knew it would happen eventually, Mr. B. Silent Hill appears in the book of 1001 video games you must play before you die by general editor of Edge magazine, Tony Mott. Should he play it, ladles and jelly spoons? Well, we here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker say yes, but if you at home think he should, then head over to Mr B's ukulele channel. Link in the description down below. And let him know. Also tell him that we sent you, you know, engagement and all that. Players assume the role of Harry Mason, who is searching for his adopted daughter, Cheryl, in the mysterious and fog-shrouded town of Silent Hill. The narrative unfolds with a sense of psychological horror, and the town itself plays a significant role in the storytelling. This game features a blooper reel that can be seen upon completion of the game. As a survival horror game, Silent Hill emphasises resource management and strategic combat. 
Limited ammunition and health items heighten the tension, encouraging players to carefully choose when to engage with the disturbing creatures that inhabit the town. Now, the PAL release of Silent Hill is ever so slightly censored. It's missing the deformed childlike enemies that appear in the school and in other places in the game. For the UK release, they were replaced with the claw finger monsters, which only have a minor role in the game late on in the original release. Silent Hill is regarded as a milestone in the horror genre, and its impact on video game storytelling and atmospheric design continues to be felt in the gaming industry today. The game's success led to the creation of a franchise that includes several sequels and spin-off titles. If you've not seen it, be sure to check out our 20th anniversary retrospective review of Silent Hill. A link for it will be in the description of this very video. Did you know that the teachers on the register in the school, Moore, Ronaldo and Gordon, are the three main members at band Sonic Youth? Tim Gordon, Lee Ronaldo and Thurston Moore. Also, the school section ends with you picking up the K Gordon key and going to her house. For many of us, collecting retro video games is more than a hobby, it's a passion. Whether it's hunting down that elusive cartridge or preserving the original boxes, there is a vibrant community dedicated to keeping these artefacts alive. And if you have not seen him yet, I can 100% recommend checking out the Retro Ghetto. Words cannot describe how much watching this man's videos has inspired me to continue making YouTube videos on this, let's face it, rather oversubscribed topic here on YouTube. Ah, Mr Ghetto is a true collector of the highest calibre. Nip over to his channel, obviously link in description down below, and tell him that we sent you. But you know, before you go clicking off this video, let's finish up looking at some classic retro titles. Also, be sure to come back here next week to check out our 20th anniversary retrospective review, where we will be looking retrospectively at a video game that's turning 20 years old. And, and what game would that be then? Well, you know what, they're just going to have to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell in order to find out. That way, ladles and jelly spoons, when the video goes live, you'll be in no. But until then, back in January 2004, when Wired's Vaporware Awards gave its first Lifetime Achievement Award to recurring winner Duke Nukem Forever, little did they know, were you by any chance playing one of these gems? Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 an action role-playing video game developed by Black Isle Studios and published by Interplay Entertainment. It is a sequel to Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance and was released for the Sony PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. According to one of the loading screens, don't you know, over a hundred thousand man-hours were put into the development of this game. The game is an action RPG with focus on real-time combat and cooperative gameplay. Players can choose from several character classes, each with unique abilities and skill trees. The game features hack and slash gameplay with heavy emphasis on dungeon crawling and loot collection. Dark Alliance 2 is set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, specifically in and around the city of Baldur's Gate. The story continues from where the first game left off, with the player embarking on a quest to defeat a new evil threatening the region. The narrative is richly woven with the lore of the Forgotten Realms, a popular D&D setting. Now, Black Isle Studios used to codename its projects after US Presidents and US Vice Presidents, an idea by Josh Sawyer. The codename for this game was Project Jackson. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 was a well-received sequel in the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance series. Known for its engaging action RPG gameplay, cooperative modes and faithful representation of the Dungeons & Dragons universe. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, an action role playing game developed and published by Interplay Entertainment for the Xbox and PlayStation 2. 
As part of the Fallout series, it deviated significantly from the traditional style of earlier games. Unlike the turn-based asymmetric gameplay original Fallout games, Brotherhood of Steel adopts a real-time action RPG format with a third-person perspective. This were a notable shift and was influenced by the popularity of action-oriented RPGs of the time. You know, like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance and Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 that we've literally just talked about. Did you know that Fallout Brother the Hood of Steel features product placement for the real-life energy drink Brawl's Garana that may be jarring for some of you Fallout fans who are used to having Nuka Cola as your post-apocalyptic drink of choice. Players could choose from one of three characters, each with their own unique background. The game's story revolves around the titular Brotherhood of Steel, a technocratic military order, as they seek to locate and secure advanced pre-war technology. The narrative involves various factions and characters typical to the Fallout universe. Now, fans' response to the game was so overwhelmingly negative that Interplay actually shut down the official Brotherhood of Steel message board. Furthermore, the game section on the NMA forums, one of the biggest Fallout forums in the world, is called Fallout Piece of Shit. PS2, Xbox, my lower intestines. The game was one of the last titles developed by Interplay Entertainment before the Fallout franchise was sold to Bethesda Softworks, making it an end of the original era of Fallout games. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel is a distinct and somewhat controversial entry in the Fallout series, known for its shift to action oriented gameplay and its departure from the series' traditional RPG mechanics. Hurt or killed, but ain't all bad. We've arrived at January 2014, so none of these gems can really be classed as retro, but it might surprise you to learn that they are now 10 years old. And you know what else really surprises me? It's how many of you lovely ladles and jelly spoons that watch us here at the Orbital Broadcast Bunker. Britain's first and only airborne subterranean studio, don't you know? Aren't subscribed to the channel. Before we go any further, I really think you should rectify that. I mean, just think of the dose of dopamine that you'll get knowing that you've done a good thing. After all, subscribing is free, the best of all of the prices. And these are arguably the best picks of January 2014, a month that saw Microsoft acquire the Gears of War franchise from Epic Games. PlayStation Now, the online streaming service from Sony Computer Entertainment, was first announced, and 2K Games discontinued its MLB 2K series. Not that that bothers me, because I were too busy playing... Giant, son. You better get out. I'm almost off duty. Broken Age, a point-and-click adventure game developed and published by Double Fine Productions. The game is notable for several reasons, including its development history, art style, gameplay mechanics and narrative. Broken Age were one of the early success stories of video game crowdfunding. It was funded through a Kickstarter campaign back in 2012, raising over $3 million and significantly surpassing its original goal. The campaign's success highlighted the potential of crowdfunding in the gaming industry. Broken Age tells two parallel stories, allowing the player to switch between them at will. One story follows Vila, a young girl chosen to be sacrificed to a monster, but who decides to fight back. The other follows Shay, a boy living alone on a spaceship under the watchful eye of an overprotective artificial intelligence. The narratives do eventually intertwine in a very creative way. Ah, true to its pointing click adventure roots, Broken Age involves puzzle solving, exploration and dialogue with various characters. The puzzles are integrated into the story, requiring players to think creatively and pay attention to the details. Broken Age is a notable game in the adventure genre, recognised for its unique art style, dual narrative structure and significance in the resurgence of point and click adventure games, partially driven by the possibility of crowdfunding in the gaming industry. Choco Rockets? Sure. What difference does it make? <laughs> Gerbesons has revolutionized Octodad, Dadliest Catch, an indie adventure game developed and published by Young Horses. It is a sequel to the 2010 freeware game Octodad. 
The game is known for its unique premise and humorous approach. Octodad Dadliest Catch is notable for its intentionally difficult control scheme, which simulates the difficulty an octopus would have in performing everyday human tasks. The player controls Octodad's limbs independently, leading to comical and often chaotic gameplay as they attempt to navigate simple tasks. The game were also financed over the crowdfunding platform Kickstarter. The developer received $24,320 after only asking for $20,000. The game follows Octodad through various scenarios, from mundane families to more adventurous settings like the aquarium, where the risk of being exposed is much higher. The story balances humour with heartwarming moments, focusing on themes like family and identity. Octodad Dadliest Catch stands out in the gaming world for its unique and humorous concept, challenging yet entertaining gameplay and its appeal as a fun, family-friendly game. It's a testament to the creativity and innovation possible in the indie game development scene. Our freezer section is all frozen up. We're working on getting it fixed, but we're sure at least one freezer door is working. We are nearing the end of our epic journey through the pixelated past. I hope today's dive into the golden era of gaming brought back some incredible memories and maybe even introduced you to some hidden gems. Before we power down our consoles, the answers to last week's questions. Now, question one was the odd man out, and the answer was Elon Musk, because all the others swell up in water. Question two was the where do you stick it question, and the answer was, of course, in the family album. Although I would have accepted on the wall, but not up the spout, because, you know, it gets covered in fluff that way. Question three came in five parts, and the answers were over the waves, under the bed, between two slices of toast, across the Alamo, and up the Edgware Road as far as the Trappist menswear boutique, and then ask again. Finally, complete the following quotation question, and the quotation was, <clears throat> hark, hark, the dogs do. Well now, Mr. B, I realise that dogs do. You can't stop them. It is in their nature. Nevertheless, the answer is bark, and anything else that dogs do is a matter for your borough council. You can jolly well ask them to hark. Anyway, your answer didn't rhyme. I mean, if you're still watching after that, uh, first off, I guess, thank you. Second off, I have a little quest for each of you. If you've enjoyed this blast from past, click that like button to show your love for retro gaming. It's like giving a high five to your favourite classic game, especially if that favourite game is one that we have talked about. Don't forget to join our growing community of vintage video game enthusiasts by clicking the subscribe button. We've got tons more content on the way and trust me, you won't want to miss out on the nostalgia trips that we have got planned. Now, to see this retro roundup in short form content, be sure to check out our other social media platforms. Links, as always, in the description down below. Most importantly, your stories and opinions are the heart of our channel. Did you have a favourite moment from today's video? Maybe a retro game that holds a special place in your heart? Drop us a comment down below and share your memories. We love reading your stories. So, until next time, keep those joysticks waggling and those memories flowing. And we'll leave you with this. Do you realise how many holes there could be if people bothered to just take the dirt out of them? Cheerio. See you Friday.